Hey everyone, welcome to day two of launch week. I'm Zoe and I'll be walking you through some new product advancements we've made to Sentry Performance to help you identify and troubleshoot performance problems faster. We've added IMP as a new core web vital, improved the tracing experience, and created a new mobile workflow to take on cold and warm starts. Let's walk through these new features together. Sentry helps you prioritize the performance problems that directly impact your end users. On the browser, Core Web Vitals are key metrics that represent the overall quality of the user experience on your web pages. Today, we're excited to share that Sentry now has support for the latest Core Web Vital, INP. INP, or Interaction to Next Paint, measures your application's responsiveness to user interaction. It takes the latency of nearly all user interactions on a page and reports the worst one. With over 90% of user time spent on a page taking place after the initial page load, measuring and improving the performance of user interactions is critical to improving the overall experience. We didn't stop at just showing you your INP metric. We've built an entire workflow to help you identify the associated element and interaction type, then to get you to the code causing poor interaction performance using profiling. Let's take a look at an example. We're constantly using Sentry to build Sentry, so let's see how things are looking for us in production. As you can see, INP is now part of the overall Sentry performance score. We can also focus solely on the INP component of the score and see how we can improve our application responsiveness with it. Clicking on that component, we can monitor INP performance over time. There's also a list of pages within your app ordered by the highest opportunity which measures how much the INP of that specific page contributes to the overall INP score. For this example, we're going to look at our Discover homepage, where users can query their Sentry events using a range of custom filters. We can see that the INP opportunity score for this page is quite high, which means there's a lot we can improve here. Clicking on the link takes us to the page overview with a list of samples, each representing a single user's experience of Discover. On this page, we can see there is a range of interaction response times. Let's look at an example of a slow interaction by opening a replay. As you'll see, when the user clicks a button on the page, it takes up to three seconds for the modal to load, which is why our IMP is so low for the user's experience of our Discover homepage. Now that we know the issue or the what, we can actually go back to the Web Vitals workflow to determine the root cause or the why, using profiles associated with each sample. Each profile collected in production from the user's browser can actually show us how long JavaScript code took to run at a function level. By identifying slow functions, we can find code paths that impact INP. The timeline at the top represents spans, the various operations that can take place when loading or interacting with a page, including resource loads, API requests, and user interactions. For our example, we can see a UI interaction click span with a duration of three seconds, equivalent to the user clicking on the button we saw earlier in the replay. Looking below the span, we can see the call stacks for code executed during the span. Specifically, there is an on-click frame that calls compute modal placement. We can see that get bounding client rec gets called many times sequentially within this function, which is why the user's interaction is taking so long to process. We can probably fix this by optimizing compute modal placement to not call get bounding client rec so frequently. Alternatively, we can update our code to yield the main thread between each call so we don't block rendering or other interactions from occurring. Now that we know the root cause, hovering over compute modal placement shows us which line and file the code is called from so we know where to apply our fix. As a reminder, Google will be replacing FID or first input delay with INP as the primary measure of interaction performance starting March 12th. We've heard the overwhelming feedback from developers that they want INP support, and we're happy to share that you can start using INP monitoring for all your front-end projects today. We're here to help you prioritize performance problems that impact end users, yet the root cause of front-end performance problems often originates in the back-end. Therefore, tracing is an essential tool for tracking user-facing performance problems to the services where the real bottleneck exists. With the new trace view, you can quickly drill down to the root cause of a performance problem without losing context as you navigate your entire application stack. You can start investigating a long front-end page load and immediately zoom into the work that the back-end is doing to serve API requests without losing context within a single view. I'll let George give you a preview of our updated tracing experience. Hi, everyone. I'm George, and I'm a senior engineer on the performance team at Sentry. I'm going to show you how Sentry's updated trace view helps you find root causes of front-end performance issues, even if they're not caused by front-end code. 
I'm working on a website for book readers and I'm checking the web vitals for my homepage. I can see here that it has a poor largest contentful paint score. A poor score for largest contentful paint or LCP means that users have to wait for a long time for important content to load. If I click on the LCP measurement, I'll see a list of page loads by the website's users. I'm going to look for a page load with a poor score. The second event in the list is a good candidate with a score of only 24. I'm going to click the event ID to open the trace view to figure out what happened. Sentry's trace view shows how the page was loaded using information from both the front-end app and the back-end service that powers it. If I follow the span waterfall down, I see lots of short resource spans, but then I notice that there is a slow network request to a back-end endpoint called by author that ends right around the LCP line. This is a strong hint that the poor LCP score is caused by this network request and not by problems with my front-end code. My app is fully instrumented with Sentry's distributed tracing, so I can click the magnifying glass of the page load to collapse it and click the one next to the network request to expand it and follow the trace into the backend endpoint without leaving the page. Here, I can see something suspicious right away, a set of grouped database queries that took over a second to run. If I open the group, Sentry even highlights them in red to point out that they're slow. I'm going to click on the first slow query to learn more. I can see that Sentry already detected a performance issue called n plus one query, so clearly there's some work to do here. To learn more about this problematic query, I'm going to click on the View Query Summary link. I can see that this query runs 1.89 times a minute and takes 2.96 milliseconds on average. It looks simple enough, but to fix it, I need to find out what caused it. To find the code that caused the query, I can click the Open this line in GitHub link. It looks like I'm inadvertently making queries for book authors in a loop in this Python list comprehension. This is an easy mistake to make. To fix this, I can prefetch the authors in the query above it at the top of the function. I know that my fix will be impactful because I follow the trace of a real user page load. I got to the code from a query, which I saw in a backend transaction, which was called in a frontend transaction, which I found from a slow LCP measurement. By starting from a real event and following the trace down to the root cause, I can be confident that my performance improvements will create better outcomes for my users. The enhanced trace view with all features you just saw and more will be available soon in Sentry. Keep your eyes peeled to our social accounts for the official launch. Finally, we can't talk about end user performance without talking about mobile. The mobile app launch sequence is your first opportunity to make a great impression with your new users. Every millisecond from tapping the icon to loading the first screen impacts end user satisfaction, retention, and conversion rates. We built an entirely new workflow for not only measuring cold and warm start performance, but tracking the root cause of slow app startup to the code responsible using spans and profiles. Let's walk through an example of how you can use the new app start module to get more insight into your mobile application start times and identify performance regressions quickly. Let's say we're a mobile development team. We've just released a new version of our app and we want to see its performance while it's being adopted. You can see we just released version 2.10.4 and we want to compare it to the previous release 2.10.2 to monitor any changes in start times. Alternatively, we can also select the start type to investigate. Let's start with cold starts because these are the longest starts our users will experience. The app has a single entry point, the Empower Plan activity screen. We can see that our cold start time to this screen has increased from three to five seconds between the two releases. We can also see that this screen has only experienced cold starts, so we don't actually have to check our warm start times for this screen. We can click into it and look at its cold start data again. We can see that the start times have gotten worse and only low end devices have been affected. The table below is showing me spans that have changed the most and I can see that I have a span called thirdpartycontentprovider.oncreate. This span used to be seven milliseconds in the first release and is now 1.24 seconds in the latest. Let's drill in further by clicking the span description. These are samples that Sentry has stored. So we can take a look at examples of startup activity containing this operation. We wanna see an example of a bad startup in the second release so we can check what new operations have contributed to the slowdown. Let's look for an event that contains a profile so I can see the function calls to understand what's happening in this operation. This profile is showing me the functions that ran during the onCreate method. Looking at the nested function calls, I can actually see there's a lot of time spent doing the same operation which seems fishy. So we can hover over the parent span to find the file name of the source code. It's in the third-party content provider.java file. Using that file name, we can find the relevant file and look at the source code in this diff. We can see the source of the regression. 
a lengthy iteration, creating a large unique string and writing it to a file. This workflow demonstrates how we can quickly identify a regression in a dependency that runs during a startup. So we can quickly revisit if this dependency is necessary. This profile should give you information about potential improvements you can make to reduce unnecessary work. The App Start module brings together samples, metrics, and profiles so we can focus specifically on startup durations without any dashboard setups and quickly resolve any regressions that appear. This workflow is currently available for iOS and Android SDKs today and coming soon for React Native. We hope you're as excited as we are about the new performance features. If you're interested in learning more about what we covered today, check out our blog and you can always reach out to us on Discord. Lastly, I'll pass it to Jasmine with our latest mobile announcement. Hey everyone, I'm Jasmine, the product manager for Session Replay. I'm excited to announce that we are now building Session Replay for mobile applications, and we're gearing up for a beta release in the early spring. React Native support was our top voted feature request on GitHub, and that's exactly where we'll be starting. Session Replay is a reproduction of a user session where you can play, pause, and rewind to see what happens before and after a bug. With Replay, you can have full visibility into issues such as crashes, application hangs, and high latency. You can also assess how severe an issue is depending on the impact in the UI or how the user responded. Last year, we released Session Replay for web. Alongside the Replay video, there are powerful debugging tools such as network requests, so you can understand what's happening on your application behind the scenes that might have led to a bug the mobile experience will have similar debugging power. Replay is everywhere you use Sentry. Replays are embedded directly within an issue so you can debug your errors faster. They're also connected to your entire stack, including performance and backend errors. For example, you can trace back to understand what caused a request to fail in your front end. We care about user privacy and we know you do too. That's why we mask all text and images by default before it leaves your user's device. You can rest easier knowing that we've taken exhaustive steps to keep sensitive information on your user's machines and not on ours. If you'd like to learn more about our Replay web product, click through to watch our explainer video on the screen. And to be one of the first beta testers for mobile Replay, be sure to add yourself to our waitlist. If you have any questions or comments, join us in Discord. I also highly recommend you tune in tomorrow to learn about how you can fix smarter with AI, premiering on the Century YouTube channel tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific. Thank you all for watching. Bye for now.